It's kind of a rapid ending, but uh, that's from The Chosen. We're glad you're here tonight. Merry Christmas. Christmas. Great to see you. Hey, I'm going to get a picture of you guys sitting up front because Grandma won't believe it, so we're just going to do this, and then I'll send you a picture. Here we go. All right, look, the pastor's right here. Reach out and touch him if you want. All right. Excellent. You even lit the candles tonight. Thanks. Good to see. Anybody else need a picture for Grandma? Anybody else? Need... Look, they're in church. They were actually in church tonight. Look, Grandma, they made it right there. They didn't want to come, but you got them there. Yeah, I know. That's how some of the husbands told me tonight when they came in. Glad you're here tonight. You're going to talk about how to have the best Christmas ever. So let me get the coolest thing ever. What is this? You are wrong. You've never been so wrong. What else is it? No? Try again. You ready? I'm going to help you out. Yeah, baby. When I was uh, in uh, eighth grade, my friends and I formed the coolest air band ever. Sasnak, which is Kansas backwards. Uh, it's true. That's how creative we were. So uh, we went to camp and we practiced like for hours and then we got up in front of a thousand students. As an eighth grader in front of a thousand students, that's pretty cool. And uh, we did the song, Carry On My Wayward Son, a classic, by the way. And uh, it was awesome. And I thought I was David Lee Roth because uh, I could do. When I was a kid, my mom stayed after school every day and the coach from the Miami Dolphins cheerleaders was coaching the cheerleaders, and so I learned how to do what we call a teddy bear. I'm sure there's a manlier name for it, but that's what we called it. And so I could do the jumps and come out on stage and act like a maniac. And so it was awesome, and I was so excited because that whole week we were followed around by girls all week. It was awesome. Eighth grade, you understand, eighth grade, you're not followed around by anybody. So it was awesome. So when we got back home... Um, I graduated, went into ninth grade, you know, they actually let me out of junior high, and uh, they had a gong show. Now, you may not know what a gong show is, but they had a gong show at my high school, so I had visions of what was going to happen, and we were going to do this again, and then girls would be following me around campus. I was so excited, and uh, we got up to do the song. We were all dressed, ready. We got out there, and if you don't know anything about gong show, they gong you, and we were not even 15 seconds into the song, and they gonged us. We did nothing, no jumps, no nothing. Do you feel the disappointment to this day? It still hurts. And uh, I was so disappointed because what I saw in my head was, this is the way it's going to be. And it wasn't. And I remember thinking later that, you know, that had ruined my air band career. But the truth is, what I didn't realize is that we were building friendships. And I almost missed the whole point of doing all these things together. Really what we built was hours and hours of friendship time together. Because guys don't talk about stuff. That's not cool. We do stuff together. And so I look back now and those are still some of my best friends to this day. They come and visit me and I go and visit them. And we keep up with each other. And even before Facebook, I know... Back in the old days, there was a time in life that there used to not be Facebook. You would like send a beeper thing to your friend or something. Now, here's what I know about you and about me. Some of you got in a fight on the way here, so we'll talk about that. But um, we can miss the best moments in life because we are disappointed because of our expectations. Or we're afraid. We're afraid of the future. We're afraid of the present or something we've heard or something we're doing. So I'm going to give you three things tonight. We're going to look at the Christmas story. And if Bob, if you would grab me a water, because I forgot again, just right here. No, no, by the, uh, go ahead. All right. Number one, don't focus on the disappointments. Now, I don't know how you do with expectations, but I tend to kind of think I know what's going to happen and it rarely ever happens. Listen to this. Luke 2, 6 and 7 says this. While they were there, a time came for the baby. You are a saint and a friend. Anybody else need some water? You're welcome. <laughs> While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. The baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. Now listen. 
I don't care if you think that the shepherds were Passover lamb shepherds. I've heard that one, and I don't know, because if they were, then nobody believed them, and I don't know why you wouldn't believe Passover lamb shepherds, but that's another story for another day. And I don't know if you think these are the cleanest shepherds or the cleanest sheep, and there weren't cows there and all that stuff, and I don't really care about that either, because I don't want my baby in the middle of sheep. Have you been around sheep? They stink. Sheep stink. I don't care if they're the cleanest sheep in the world. They stink. I mean, I don't even... You don't even want your dog near a baby. Much less wrap your baby up in paper towels and put them in a food dish. I don't know what Mary's expectations were when the angel said, you're going to have the Messiah. I'm guessing she wasn't thinking swaddling clothes, food dish. Now, regardless of what you think the manger was or wasn't, I don't really care, but I can't imagine that this was what she thought. If you and I aren't careful today, if you and I aren't careful today, when we miss one thing, we will miss everything. See, there was no room for them in the end. There was no room. Maybe it was a family room. Uh, We don't know, but we know that somebody said no to them. We don't have room for you. I don't know if you have ever been excluded I don't know if in your family you feel left out. Maybe you're the middle child and you feel all the time like you, you never measure up. Or, or maybe for whatever reason in your family you're the one that seems to have a hard time. Can I tell you something? Mary and Joseph knew what it felt like to not feel included. And yet, God was doing something very special. And if you focused only on the one thing, no room... No place, no friendship, I don't think that person likes me, then you miss the rest of Christmas. Can I tell you something? At Christmas time, somebody is not going to be happy. And you can take on their unhappiness. And by the way, you may already be it. You may be wearing a Grinch shirt here tonight. I don't know. But the truth is, you don't have to take on their unhappiness. And even if you're a Grinch, can I tell you something? There's always something to be thankful about and let your heart grow. That's another Story for another day. Number two, don't let fear stop you from God's best. Don't let fear stop you from God's best. I don't know if you've ever played golf. You you guys seen a golf club before? So when you play golf, let me tell you the worst thing you can do. They, They always put water somewhere near one of the holes. And if you're like me, you'll go up there and you'll go, don't hit the water, don't hit the water, don't hit the water, don't hit the water. And you will, if you're me, you'll just hit the water. Or if you're one of my friends, you'll hit it exactly the opposite of the water and have to yell four at somebody else. Four, because you're coming at somebody's head. You get so focused on the wrong thing, you're so afraid of what might happen, you miss everything. Listen, if you're always thinking about what may happen next, If you're always thinking about what the doctor might tell you next, if you're always concerned about something that could go wrong, you will always, always, always miss the moments. Listen to this. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were, what's the next word? Terrified. Terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news. By the way, it's easy for angels to say, don't be afraid. I mean, if you're out in darkness with a torch looking for lions, and you're looking for tigers, and you're looking for bears, I mean, if... That was good. If you're looking for those things, right? And you're looking for little beady eyes and then all of a sudden, whoo! Angels apparently don't have fade in. They're like God's mafia. God the Father. They wipe people out, they protect people, and they bring messages. So they appear and they say, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy For all the people. Then they said, today in the town of David, a Savior's been born to you. He is Messiah the Lord. And then we know a whole host appears. And I'm betting that at least one of those dudes was standing there. After they were done. The angels are gone and there's one guy just, you know that guy. You work with that guy. And that's why the next sentence says, let's go. Because he's lost. He's still in the fear. See, if you walk in fear all the time and you're worried about what happens next and you're worried about what could go on next and you always are walking in fear, there's a reason why the, the, you know what the most common command in the Bible is? Don't fear. 
Some scholars say it's there 365 times. I'm not sure if that's totally accurate, but the truth is, it's there a lot. It's there more than any other command. Don't fear. Why? Because fear ruins us. If you watch the news all the time, guess what? Fear and anger is what they want. Why? Because you'll watch a lot of commercials and they make more money. If you think the news cares about you, you need to recalculate your motives. That's why you need to open God's word and let God's word bring peace to you. Number three, here's what I want you to do. Not only do I want you to not focus on the disappointments and not let fear stop you. Number three, I want you to treasure the moments. Treasure the moments. Hey, some of you talked a family member into coming tonight. And they're sitting with you. They're not, and they're maybe, they're, you're sitting there and all you can think about is, I wonder if they're having a good time. You know, I hope Pastor Eric hur hur hurries up and gets done because they're not going to stay long. <laughs> so I want you to do something. I want you to thank the people that are next to you and around you for being here tonight. Just take a moment and do that. Let's enjoy that moment. Can I tell you what a treasure is? This piece of wood is a treasure. You know why this piece of wood is a treasure? Somebody sent this to me. This is from my home church in Miami. This is actually a piece of the banister they had too much of. Somebody overordered. But then they cut it up and they gave it out to church members. And what you don't know is what I know, which is my dad laid all the block for that church or paid for it to be laid. And he helped to build that huge church called Wayside in Miami. And then somebody sent me this so that I could remember all that my dad had done before he passed away. It doesn't matter to you, but it's precious to me. Be not because of the thing, but because of the who. Listen, don't get so busy worried about the thing that you forget the who. Do you know tomorrow morning some parent went all over and got the perfect gift for their child? And they will give it to them in the morning and they'll be so excited and the mom and dad will watch and the kid will play with it for three seconds and then play with the box for four hours. <laughs> and if you're focused on the things, you will miss the moments which are full of so many wonderful things. Listen to this. Luke 2.19. This is, this is your key verse. If you don't remember anything else, remember this one. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. That word for treasure means she protected. She saw that it was important. Hey. These moments are important. Did you hear me? These moments are important. So tomorrow, whether you're alone or whether you're with a group of people, maybe even some people you don't like that much. <laughs> treasure the moments anyway. You may need to take a walk to refocus tomorrow. It might get busy and somebody's a doofus and so you're like, oh, I, gotta, I need a break. Take a walk. Just just take a moment and say, you know what? It's not about them. It's about the moments with these people. Let me show them God's love. This is how much God loved you. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, he gave his one and only son. That's what we celebrate at Christmas, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. The reason Christianity is different from every other religion is God said, you can't make it to me, but I can come to you. And that's why we sing Breath of Heaven. That's why we sing these songs about having joy. Because we realize we couldn't make it to God, but he made it to us. I want to encourage you. Don't miss the moments. If you got in a fight on the way here because somebody was late. Pastor was almost late, by the way. Really close. If I passed you on the way here, forgive me, please. But, uh, <laughs> if you, uh, but if you got in a fight on the way here, I just want to encourage you. It's not about getting places. Tomorrow's not about getting stuff done. Tomorrow's not about having the perfect day. Tomorrow's about those people that are near you. Or if they're far from you, send them a text. Give them a call. Hey, if you have a family member that's not texted you in six months and you think, I'm not sending them a Merry Christmas, can I tell you what you need to do tomorrow? Do you need a hint? Exactly right. You call them. By the way, calling somebody is an app on your phone. It's kind of
kind of like texting, but you actually talk to the person. Listen, don't treasure your stuff. Treasure those people tomorrow. Enjoy those moments. God only gave us two commands, love God and love people. The God part's easy. Those people are tough. But God will give you grace to do it. We're going to close in prayer, and then we're going to have our time of candle lighting and a song. So would you join me as we pray? Father, thank you for your grace. I thank you for your love for us. Lord, I thank you that in these moments, you can help us to be more loving. Father, you can help us to be kinder. Lord, you can bring peace to our homes where there's not been a lot of peace. Lord, you can help us to love people even when they're not easy to love. So, Father, we thank you for these moments together. In Jesus' name, amen.